This time on Woody's garage. When did you sneak that dirty little engine in this house? So here we have a HS40. This is an engine I picked up with a bunch of stuff four years ago in that big giant collection that I got. At least I think that's where I got this. Um, just been sitting around doing nothing. But uh, recently, I actually, I had no idea how many horsepower it was. It's a Craftsman engine, so I looked up that number and found out that it's a four horsepower HS40, which is great. Uh, so I wrote the stuff down on it. Um, now this is a candidate that could go on that snowblower. But, you know, do you want to put this on a snowblower and have a four horsepower snowblower, which is pretty underpowered? Or, you know, it's a, it's a great engine for a mini bike. The reason I like this one, and the snowblower requires it, is that you have to have the second PTO, the crankshaft drive, for the, uh, for the drive of the snowblower, where the primary is for the auger. Now, this is a big-ass shaft on this thing. And if you notice... It's, it looks like it's about a one inch, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, it isn't going to be tapered. It measures the same there as it does here. Don't believe me? Okay, I'll show you. Right there. Right there. But, I'm thinking, hey, you move these guys, and you slam it all the way in, and maybe it'll be about the right spacing to go on the snowblower. But once again, do I want to use it on that snowblower? <laughs> I don't know. Some nice dirty oil in it. I think I got it running. I can't remember. Usually, you know, you get an um, engine in from something or other, and right away, the first thing you want to do is you want to see if it sputters, you know, to make sure it kind of works. So I'm pretty sure I did that. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I might have pulled this off of a snowblower that was all rusty. Scratch that. So just by memory, right about where these set screws are on the shaft is where the pulley ran on the snapper snowblower. So I'm wondering if I unscrew these and pound it all the way in, if it'll be close. If not, you can definitely cut part of this off. The pulley size looks about the same. Let me see if I can get those Allens uh, loose. <clears throat> yeah, we got them. two-handed job so if they're loose we'll get them out we'll get some oil down there we'll see if we can tap this thing back a little bit right down the holes maybe it'll reach something haven't even tapped it yet but oh we'll tap it comically huge wooden hammer this again. <laughs> yeah, it may have moved a little bit. I mean the shaft's so rusty, what do I expect? I haven't even cleaned it up. Yeah, I got the wheel puller again. The old bent up piece of crap wheel puller. Get it off before we put it on, right? Get the shaft off. Yeah, that's going good. The uh, <laughs> this thing has managed to cross thread itself because of the uh, abuse it's taken and the abuse it's given me. So. The arms don't really have equal pressure on them.
Like a jack in the box, you know? Once it's gonna pop off and hit you right in the nuts. Ugh. Moving? I don't know. I think it might be. <sighs> well, that's about as interesting as watching paint dry. I'll show it to you when I get it off, if I get it off. Oh, look what I did. I bent the goddamn thing. All right, next day, new plan. Oh, I was thinking of using one of my other pullers. This type of puller. And I thought, uh, first thing I'll do is take off this pulley. This is not budging, even with the cheetah bar on it it's just it feels like it's ready to snap so I just stopped there so I cut out this piece of wood this piece of plywood I don't know half inch or something stuck it behind here and then I thought of going like this drilling some holes in this it'll like just reach <laughs> and uh, going for this you know, this should be a kick in the pants. All right. How long do you think the plywood will last? Well, I really don't think that's going to go, so I broke down and got a, another crappy wheel puller, gear puller. Harbor Freight, this thing's like 17 bucks. We'll put it together and see if we can make that one work. Yeah, there's nothing like buying a new tool and having to work on it before you can fucking use it. throw I couldn't seem to get it to catch inside here it just kept falling off so we'll try here I'm about to destroy this one too. That sucker is not moving. I just heated it up good too. It's just stuck. It's also getting to be like uh, the engine needs to be bolted down because it just starts flailing all over the place when I'm turning it and holding it with that piece of wood. And I stuck it on with the arms really long. I'm about to lose my battery. And uh, just kind of skewing off and not really pulling very well. Yeah, we got some movement. I was pounding with the, uh, the big socket on the thing and it uh, definitely has gone in about an inch. But uh, we're going the wrong way. <laughs> but that might loosen it up a little bit, right? I hope so. Okay, I had to bolt it down just too floppy to deal with. Hoping this will help. Yeah, it's moving. It's coming out. How far? We'll find out. Might have to tap it in, tap it out a few times, but it's happening. Yeah, 
and it'll grease up the shaft we'll grease up inside the pulley we'll hit it back in and then we'll try to take it back out again see if it goes any further I bet it will well that's it for the threads on this puller yeah we got it this far with the old puller that's about as far as I'm getting it right now, but it's pretty damn close. That was easy. I'm bringing that piece of shit back to Harbor Freight. Let's see if we can get this back in shape. Well, it's getting there. I'll get this key out of here. I've been pounding it a little bit. Actually, I've been pounding it a lot. There it is. Gotcha. That shaft looks a little healthier. It still is a fight though. You know, I don't want it to get stuck on there again. I don't have any pullers anymore. They're all broken. That's what we want to see. Okay. Let's see how round this thing is. Hey, that's not that bad. You know? Wide enough for a V-belt, I don't know, it might need to be a little wider. Yeah, that's not bad. Now I see a couple of places, but uh, yeah, hell, that's not bad at all. Still, will it work on the uh, snapper? Like I think if we were to cut off right behind the set screws here, I think we'd get that much more and it would line up just like the other one was. Okay, we cut this much off of the pulley, the cutting wheel. Then we had to file out a little bit to make the ends a little more open. And uh, yeah, we still have a place for our Allens. And this is about how far in, actually right about here was about where the other one was. Maybe about there. So we got a lot of room to play with. If this is going to go on that uh, snowblower and the snapper snowblower. Yeah, I got the Allens in. Um, still working on the shape of this. Still a little. Ooh, ooh. But uh, we'll get it. Or if we even use it, I don't know. Okay, I'm outside with the uh, four horsepower Tecumseh HS40, and uh, I think it's, it runs, but I'm actually not positive. So the first thing I'm going to do is check for spark. Let's see if we can get you zoomed right in on that plug. Let's see. That's not the weirdest thing ever. So I saw no spark. So I said, just put some gas in and try it anyway. <laughs> and yeah, it started. All right, we slopped a little gas in it. Run fast. Got the choke on full. Let's see if it starts now. 
Well, look, there's evidence of a new starter rope, which I probably put in. So, I must have run it before. Just weird about that no spark. on the cylinder. No, I didn't even prime it. That's uh, all I'm gonna do is loosen it and take it off. Put those wires back down. Take a look at this bowl. You know, I'm thinking it might be a tire capacitor. I don't know if this is points motor or not. I don't know the age, the uh, kind of the cover of the motor. Makes me think it's a newer one without points. This gas hose is hard as a rock. I got it uh, cut off in front there with the tool. It's leaking a little bit. up pretty well with just a couple of drops of Marvel Mystery Oil and a toothbrush. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. Rusty. That's better. Put it back together and see what happens. pushed the float up and it was holding back gas so it was probably stuck so if there's no gas in this bowl right now it's because it was stuck and yeah okay we'll clean that yeah it was pretty stuck sound like it leaks. We'll clean them up. We'll take a Q-tip and put it up the uh, hole. Got a Q-tip uh, soaked in some mystery oil. Let's see if we can get it up in there. Pretty good. I think it's just that um, 
Just the pin really needs to be clean. Okay, parts are clean. Let's put it back together. Well, the bowl's getting gas now because it's dripping a little. Let's start it up anyway. sticky all right it seems that the bowl was just kind of loose it was leaking down there get the screw out about a turn and a half there's still another jet I should clean but I haven't yet Let's just see what happens this time no choke Shut it down because the throttle plate is stuck. <laughs> that plate is stuck. Usually, when I awaken engines, I don't like them to be at full blast. I like to, I like to let them be low RPM for a little while. the turns out with a screwdriver spray some uh, brake cleaner in there and screw it back in although sometimes that's a fixed one it's, there's no adjustment at all but we'll see mmm yeah, I can barely screw it in so it could be fixed I'll show you when I get it out yeah we got another award winning Jet. Look at that baby. Okay, we'll clean that up. We'll put it back in. Yeah, cleaned up that jet. Screwed it in. I'm going to just turn it like about a quarter out. Start there.
don't want to shut off now. Yeah, that's good. So it's a, it's a good candidate for either the snap or snow blower or for the mini bike.